Hi everyone, in this video I'll be giving a hopefully easy to digest introduction, history, and explanation to the Mamba state space model. We know that transformers have generally improved long-range dependencies due to the attention mechanism, but when we consider even longer sequence lengths, for example in contexts like genomics or extremely long texts, they don't scale very well. This is largely due to the quadratic self-attention complexity, which is resource intensive. The time that it takes to calculate attention quadratically grows with each new data point that you add to a series. To address this, there have been many architectures that have been developed that are much faster than this quadratic efficiency during inference. For example, we have linear attention, gated convolution, recurrent networks, and in this talk, state space models or SSMs. Before we talk about Mamba or S6, we have to have a good foundation. Mamba was built based off of RNNs, SSMs or state space models were built based off of RNNs, S4 improved on those SSMs and Mamba improved upon the S4 model. On to RNNs, so recall that RNNs are linear in prediction time for the next word. Why we're talking about RNNs is because state space models or SSMs are a version of an RNN. Essentially, RNNs take the current state and then predict the next. RNNs essentially attempt to collapse information. There are a couple of limitations to this, though. When you're collapsing information into a hidden space, you tend to forget information on longer sequences. Say here near the end, we forget what was at the beginning. RNNs are also typically slow for training because you have to sequentially process the inputs to get the next output and then compute all the gradients all the way back through. RNNs also suffer from vanishing gradients. Um, as you propagate the gradient updates through back propagation, the values can either explode or go to zero. Here's an example that I found in a really great Medium article explaining Mamba. How can we fit context into latent space? So imagine if we used characters to represent the hidden space instead of numbers um, in here, this example. And the sentence is, say we had a latent or hidden space of size five to remember context. It's hard enough to fit context into latent space to do anything rather than remember the last couple of characters within our sentence as we go along. So it's really difficult um, to try to encode both something at the start of the sequence and also the previous token. Gated recurrent units or long short short term memory models have actually uh, provided gating mechanisms within the RNN cell to decide what to remember, what to forget from the sequence as you go along. And so you can only fit so much context into a hidden state no matter how well you gate fill to remember, especially if you only have a size five uh, latent space. Okay, so enough about RNNs, now we're going to move on to state space models. So what is a state space model or an SSM? An SSM is a mathematical framework used to model dynamic systems. Essentially, it takes a one-dimensional input sequence, maps it to a latent space, and then projects it back into a one-dimensional output sequence. SSMs are at the core of Mamba, and you can think of them as kind of like a replacement for the self-attention mechanism in the transformer. In the SSM, you have a state variable, our latent space H, and this state variable evolves over time depending on the input. SSMs can be defined through ordinary differential equations H prime of t and Y of t. The state equation, or H prime of t, describes how the internal state of the system evolves over time. And then the observation equation, or Y of t, relates that internal state of the system to the measurements or observations that are made. A, B, and C, in this case, are learned parameters. But when I look at equations like this, I usually get confused, so I really like to mark things down. So H prime of T, again, is how the state changes over time. Y of T is the prediction. A, B, and C are learned parameters that can change. H prime of T is the implicit state. And then X of T is our input, or in this case, it can be a word embedding. This is different from the standard recurrent network because it's fully linear. It doesn't have any of the nonlinear transformations that an LSTM or a GRU might have. So again, H of T is how the state changes over time. A, B, and C are learned parameters. A represents the state matrix. It denotes how the hidden space should be updated 
over time, the hidden space is h of t. b is a vector. It denotes how the input needs to be transformed into the hidden space. And then c is also a vector, converting the hidden state back to the final output. All in all, this architecture offers linear computational complexity per time step. So it's really efficient and you can parallelize it uh, for efficient training. But it might demand more memory and you might encounter vanishing gradients as well during training. Also, you might assume linear dynamics uh, because you're only doing things sequentially. From SSMs, the S4 model was built to address those limitations. So naive SSMs were significantly improved to improve temporal dynamics with this new S4 model or structured state space model. How S4 improved on the SSM is basically through incorporating a bag of really cool innovative tricks. Um, right now, we know that the state and the observation equations are currently continuous representations of the system, right? In the leftmost box, we see that the latent space x, which was h, maps to the input u and also to the output y. However, the data that we handle in the real world is mostly discrete, whether it's language or genomics or anything else. So therefore, we must discretize the data to supply the information to the computer and also the SSM. Rather than computing for the entire smooth curve of the first box, the second box actually employs a recurrent representation method, calculating for the discrete data points, like the points on the curve of the second box. Essentially, this just describes how you chop up A, B, and C into discrete parts, and how you chop it up is something that you can learn. So this allows the model to decide how it wants to chop up the input into different step sizes. Different SSM layers can act at different scales with the learned deltas. I won't go up, go into um, how you chop up A, B, C, and D, but you can think of the learned discretized uh, parameters as A bar, B bar, C bar, and D bar. But essentially, the recurrent representation inherently looks just like the RNN. We use the previous steps, hidden state, and the input right here to generate the output at that step or here. S4's recurrent representation can then be expanded over time steps using the state and the output equations. So after calculating the system's next state based off of the current state and the output, you can do this repeatedly for each moment in time. And this is slow because you have to do it step by step. But if you look at the whole process from a distance, step back a little bit, we can actually see that what we're doing is we're doing a sliding filter over the data to capture patterns, essentially a convolution. You can see um, algebraically this unrolling happening. So you have the, the current state to predict the next state based off of um, the parameters prior. You can see this unrolling here. And so the trick is that they actually just unrolled the RNN essentially into a really wide CNN for training. The repeated multiplication of the state matrix uh, because of this convolutional kernel is actually really computationally expensive because you have to update the state transition matrix A every time you calculate the next um, Y or the next output, right? So what S4 did is that it imposed a structure on state matrix A. Uh, making it more diagonal, which actually reduced the complexity of all of those operations. It did this with um, the high order polynomial projection operator or HIPPO. I won't go into HIPPO, but if you want to learn more about HIPPO, you can check out this paper called How to Train Your HIPPO that was released by Goo et al. As well. Okay, moving from S4s into Mambo or S6. So now you have the foundation. The most critical issue of the previous SSM models was actually the lack of the ability to choose how to select data that was actually and most representative of the data and the inputs. And so we go back to the fundamental question about how to compress lengthy contacts efficiently without losing too much information. How do we choose what to compress? Mamba improved S4 using a selection mechanism. For S4, we can see that the input was processed using the structured matrix A, which was mentioned prior, and then the parameters B and C, which remain the same. Mamba modifies this S4 algorithm by making the parameters change depending on the input using the selection mechanisms SX. So you can see B 
changes based off of sx and also c now changes based off of sx this means that uh, all of those a b and c parameters change depending on the input data at every time step so that allows the model to select and forget the relevant information also, Mamba is actually limited to recurrence now rather than S4's recurrence or convolution. Just because of the nature of the time varying dynamic behavior is very lin it's very linear. You have one step depends on another. There's there's no way that you can do a convolution at that point, at least with the Mamba S6. So yes, Mamba's parameters change with every time step. You cannot take advantage of the past parallel processing that S4's convolution has. In TLDR, while Mamba might be better at handling more complex sequences, it loses that computational efficiency because of parallelization compared to S4. However, it's still a little bit better than Transformers, which is quadratic, right? Because this is now linear. These selective SSM blocks can be incorporated as standalone transformations into a neural network, just like how you would run an RNN cell and like a uh, like an LSTM cell or a URU cell. Mamba can be also incorporated into a cell itself. For how Mamba performed, it actually um, was tested on a bunch of zero point evaluation tasks and it blew it out the water. Essentially, you can look at this graph more in depth if you would like, but it performs really well compared to other models. The model was evaluated on a couple of different tasks. So we have synthetic data, you know, language model pre-training, audio generation, and also testing on genomics or DNA modeling. Um, the first one is induction heads. So basically what induction heads is testing is given a paragraph, um, how well can you recite that paragraph just based off of memory? So Mamba blows other models out of the water for induction. Um, you can see that Mamba at the very end. Um, so the check marks actually just denote perfect generalization accuracy. So you can see that Mamba is actually up to two to the power of 20, which is around a million. Um, it blows it out of the water. It's crazy. <laughs> also, um, you can see this here. Mamba is the very top bar, even up to test sequence lengths of 10 to the power of 6, which is roughly a million. So the next evaluation they did was language modeling. Simply, they just predicted the next word for a large language model pre-training. Mamba also blows it out the water for best knowing transformers of the same size. Um, they measured it using perplexity. So it's the ability to predict the next word and also zero shot downstream chas so you can see how, how well mamba performed in terms of uh, language modeling they also evaluated mamba on dna modeling classification so you can kind of think of this task as um, given a dna sequence can you classify it to any certain species so they ran experiments to classify five species um, randomly sampling uh, any contiguous cell segment of their DNA. Hyena DNA also did this in their own evaluations between human, lemur, mouse, pig, and hippo. Um, and they did really well. But when we compare it to Mamba, Mamba actually uh, also blows it out the water, but they also did a more challenging task. Um, they tried to classify five great ape species, which is arguably... Um, a little bit more difficult. So it's human, chimpanzee, gorilla, orangutan, and bonobo. Even up to a sequence length of 10 to the 6, still performed really, really well. So here are my key takeaways from that Mamba paper. Mamba improved S4 because of its selection mechanism, which allowed it to select relevant info in an input-dependent manner by parameterizing the SSM's parameters based off of the input data. So it's the parameters A, B, C, D that I, that I mentioned earlier. This is also a hardware-aware algorithm because compared to transformers, which are quadratic in efficiency, Mamba scales linearly in sequence length because it computes recurrently with the scan. In addition, its simpler design demonstrates state-of-the-art performance compared to the other models, scaling up to 2.8 parameters on language data. My closing thoughts. So in theory, with enough compute power, even a transformer can support unlimited context. But Mamba stands out effectively by using larger datasets and networks to produce a lot of smarter results. So 
Um, rather than having more data in a bigger network, that doesn't always guarantee better performance. Mamba actually argues that you can have really great performance with a simple model. We should also consider that no free lunch um, concept where um, there are a little bit of limitations. We, the authors actually note that the discretization step helps for discrete modalities like text and DNA, but if we were to apply this model on a continuous format such as audio, we might loop remove some of the inductive biases that come along with that kind of continuous form. How do we decide what and how to discretize? How do we decide what to chop up? How do we decide like what parameters and like where the parameters are chopped up and um, yeah. Here's some more resources, but I'll also link some other resources in the description below. But anyways, thank you so much for listening. I hope that this was a little bit easy to digest. I'm sure there are a bunch of more complicated YouTube videos out there to describe um, Mamba in more complexity. But uh, for the average Joe, I hope you understood. <laughs> thank you.